Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and today I'm going to share with you my bullet journal layout for the month of July 2022. If you haven't already, please subscribe, please hit the notification bell and if you enjoy this video and you find it useful just give this a thumbs up, that's really really helpful to me. And if you want to explore further there are over 400 videos on my channel so just hit those playlists to see which appeals to you the most. Before I take you through the July layout for my bullet journal I'm going to spin you back to June and show you the drawings that I did in that month. My cover page for June was this lovely little collection of daisies in pots and this was based on a photograph I took of some daisies in pots that I had at the front of my house and on the inside I continued that theme with a little daisy display. Uh, my goals and the month of June all set out there then I have just my very, very simple layout that has all of the days and the dates down there. And I had uh, some three sections. I always have three sections for planning, for any ideas that I have. And then I decorated this with some daisies around the edge. Now the drawings that I did for June were a little bit different because um, we actually went away to the mountains uh, during the uh, almost the peak of the heat wave that we've had here in France and the mountains were beautifully cool and we stumbled across this amazing chateau called Chateau Murol and it just appears out of the hills it's incredibly impressive it's a uh, 13th century or 12th century I think and it just sits perched on this perfectly defensible hill it's an amazing structure and I wanted to try and capture that but I knew my drawing skills just weren't up to drawing the amazing scenery so I reverted to making a very simple sort of doodle cartoon and this is pretty much what Chateau Morol represented um, and I will always remember the cool of the mountains and sometimes it's quite um, nice to draw something and have a visual memory of it rather than trying to write down the impact that it made on you when you first saw something as amazing as this. And then because I was inspired by this, when we came home uh, we went for a walk by the river and that inspired me to do this little drawing. So this is Ondodonia and uh, it's got a, a little building on the hill, this is typical of the little pigeon air buildings that we see in the landscape around us. And this is very representational, the water flowing down the hillsides and turning into the river, um, the mighty river uh, that uh, is 10 minutes walk away for us. And then these are sort of, um, maybe they're geese, maybe they're ducks, I'm not entirely sure. And uh, some uh, forest in the background because we're surrounded by forest where we are here. I have my four little photos that I always include in a gallery at the end of my month, a sort of a summary of things that happened during that month. And then this picture here is a drawing that I made of two roses that we bought to climb outside our house. They're very popular around here. They seem to grow very, very well. So I'm hoping that they will add a splash of color to the natural stonework. And this is based very loosely on a couple of photographs that I took of our roses. What was really challenging about drawing these is that the petals going all different directions. They, they, some of them uh, face towards you, some of them flop over, all within the same flower head. And trying to capture that was a bit of a challenge, but I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. And I want to share with you the pencils that I've been using to colour my image. This is just a little sample so that I can show you, but I've been using these pencils. Now these are um, Pit Pastel by Faber-Castell. They are a German pencil. This particular colour is 174 and I think there's over 50 pencils in the range. But these are pastel pencils. So it only needs a tiny, tiny bit of pressure. I mean, actually, I'm not really applying any pressure. I'm just letting the pencil rest on the page. And you get this really soft, very quick coverage. And then you can rub it with your finger to make it uh, a softer look. Or the other thing that I found that is really useful, and this is something that I actually used to use when I was making Fimo uh, creations, uh, is this colour shaper. It's a round cup, it's firm and it's a size zero. This is what it looks like. And this is a great way of just smudging the colour so you can put the colour exactly where you want it. So if you want to start off with quite a strong colour in the middle and you want to fade that out, these little colour shapers are the ideal tool to do that and it means that you don't get dirty fingers all the time. I think it's really nice. The other thing that's rather nice about using them, it's not terribly obvious in this, but 
they actually, um, when you smudge them like this, it's nice to have little smudges going outside of the line. It gives it a sort of um, shadow effect. I want to show you how quickly I can colour my drawings now. I put a little bit just around the central stem of the leaf. This bit here is also green and I've got a really nice pink. This is number 124, this rather nice pinky shade that I've used. And I just put a tiny little bit, so you can see I've put hardly any colour on my image. And, to, and I just smudge it out from the stem. And very quickly I get lovely coverage. It's very soft towards the edge of the petals. And it doesn't take any time at all to do. Smudging it is also quite a good idea if you don't have a fixative spray or if you don't want to use a fixative spray. And then before I move on to smudge the pink, I'm just going to clean off my the little end of this tool. Uh, if I wasn't doing this on a practice piece, I would do this on a separate piece of paper. And I can just smudge away the pink. And I really like the softness of these. So if you're interested in looking at some new ways of adding some colour to your drawings, um, you might want to give these a go. They're available as sets or you can buy them singly. I bought them individually to begin with just to see how I got on with them. And uh, I loved them so much that I went back and got a few more. I won't tell you how many. <laughs> This is my bullet journal layout for July. Now, if you've seen these before, you will know I like to keep my bullet journal very, very simple. Um, it's not full of lots of charts and mood trackers and things like that. It is simply a way for me to document appointments and events and places that I need to be. I have a little bit of space to make some notes about ideas that I might have or projects that I might want to pursue. And basically that's it. And then I leave a lot of space for drawing and then for my little photo gallery at the end of the month. For July, I have sort of drawn, I don't know if this is a real flower, but I wanted to do something very simple and then see how many ways I could develop it. So this is actually, uh, this little flower is a very basic thing, but the leaves are based on the bamboo leaves. We've got a forest of bamboo in our garden. I've spent quite a lot of time in there trying to reduce the amount of bamboo that we have and make sure it doesn't grow anymore. And so I'm quite familiar with these shapes now. And it's been quite nice to, to sort of mix it up with um, the, the leaves, these long, thin, quite jaggy leaves and these maybe invented flowers to create a sort of um, a splash across the page. And then to reveal my calendar for July, I've cut out a hole in the middle here, just using my scalpel blade that I used for that I used for crafting. Over the page, I've kept a note of the pit pastel colours that I've used. These were those same Faber Castell pencils that I was just talking about, and then I used the the uh, bamboo leaves in a different way. I, I shortened them a little bit, and I continued adding my funny little flowers to create this layout to envelop the month of July. Now you'll be familiar with this if you've seen my layouts in the past, it's very simple. I even gave up on doing calligraphy. Um, I gave up the pretense that I could do calligraphy and I just went with very very simple lettering at the top. I've got my day's initials down the side and I've got the date beside that as well and then I make a note of any birthdays or anything like that that is uh, coming up. On this side I've done a little border again using my bamboo leaves and funny flowers and I've switched things around a little bit this month so instead of having my goals on one of my inner pages I've got my goals here they've got their own little box and then I've got another box for ideas and another box for projects. The rest of my journal I will leave blank so that there's plenty of space for me to draw. Um, mostly this is about drawing it's to make sure that I spend a whole year at least uh, drawing very, very regularly, and I'm pleased to say that I have managed to do that. But I have started doing, um, just drafting a layout uh, for a little bouquet on this page. So I've got to start for the drawings that I want to do in July. I hope this will inspire you to consider keeping your own bullet journal. I tried a couple of years ago and I got a bit frustrated because I felt like I should be adding all these extra clever things, um, like all sorts of clever trackers and I should be filling things out every single day and that's just not me it's just not how my life goes but this sort of thing where I can record exactly what I've got going on I've got a little space for my notes and the rest of it is just about creating space to draw this really really works for me don't feel that you have to 
do your bullet journal in any way that doesn't suit you. Don't feel like you have to um, include all sorts of things that, that you don't really know how they work and you're not really sure why they're there. You do your journal to suit yourself and then when you flip back like this I think you'll be quite impressed and surprised with what you have actually achieved um, and I'm very pleased that I've managed to draw as frequently in this little book as, uh, as I have. So I'm looking forward to the next six months as well. Um, lots of space still for drawing. Do go and have a look at some of the other videos where I talk about bullet journaling. Uh, they will be on a playlist uh, on my uh, homepage of my YouTube channel. And until we meet again, stay safe and take care.